So um, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, it's great to have some intermediate folks here too. Thanks Jody for inviting, spreading out the word. Um, so this hopefully in the next hour or so, you'll get a better idea of what close reading is, what it looks like. Um, a lot of these ideas are from um, Chris Lehman and Kate Roberts' new book, Falling in Love with Close Reading. I know in intermediate they're doing a, um, a book study around this. And uh, I've ordered some copies for us. They're in the mail. So uh, when they come in, I'll get, I'll pass that around to, to us in the middle school. Um, and it's interesting, uh, one of the sessions I was in with Kate Roberts recently about close read, reading, and were you in one with her as well? So some of the ideas you may see from there, and uh, we thank her for kind of leading us in this kind of study. So the first kind of idea is, you know, what's the big buzz now? Why is close reading coming back into our discussions? And, and um, part of it is because of this, you know, books like these that are coming out. Um, I think even our high school did a presentation at NCTE with lenses, reading with lenses uh, recently. Um, and you can see in the very first reading standard, it says uh, read closely to determine you know, what the text says explicitly and implicitly. Um, but I also think there's maybe a, a um, you know, when you say close reading, it's maybe another way of saying slow reading, like slow it down. And I think there is a, maybe in our culture, because things are so fast paced now, uh, there have been some movements that have kind of reacted to fast food, fast pace. You know, there's the slow food movement. There's the slow thinking movement. There were even a couple of articles on slow reading. And so I think that is part of maybe all of us are kind of say, hey, slow down. And, and I know in my kids, my kids are reading quickly through books and just the idea to slow down, which is related to the close reading idea. Um, the problem is when we kind of um, talk about this with our kids, they aren't so enthusiastic, you know? Um, let's go back into the text and look at this, you know? They're not really willing or wanting to do this as much. And so Kate and Chris um, talk about in their book about how important it is to tap into the feeling or emotion that comes along with close reading. And they actually say, we, we know a lot of what it feels like to read closely in our lives, not necessarily with texts maybe, but with uh, movies or songs and how we keep going back to the same ones over and over. <laughs> You know, my daughter who's six, she just saw Frozen for the sixth time yesterday. And last night when I was putting her to bed and she was saying, you know that part where they said this, you know? And she was doing close reading right there because it made her feel a certain way. And so they talk about, um, you know, tapping into that emotion. And we do it uh, also um, growing up, you know, whether it's our pet's expression, whether it's our favorite sweater or like, a, you know, a stuffed toy or stuffed animal. We, we you know, know that thing so well that it makes us feel a certain way. And it's, you know, we want that idea to translate into reading in texts. Like, readers should know that text so well when you go back into it. So let's just do a little, um, think back to your middle school years. Um, and think back, maybe it was a movie or a song that you experienced and you just watched it over and over, or is a defining um, piece for you. Could you just share with someone next to you uh, if it was a song or movie? What okay, so, um, you know, and I don't know if it was the movie or a song, whether it was the actual text that, that did it for you. It was probably the feeling you got from just, you know, living it that over and over again. Um, and I think there's another emotion we could play with as we're teaching close reading, and that's the emotion of surprise. Um, when you go back and you see something a second time, invariably, you'll see something new. And um, if it's the right kind of surprise, you'll be like, how did I miss that the first time? And I think um, that might be an exciting thing for us to try and do, and, and there's some ideas coming up. Um, in our classrooms. But before we do that, I want to try close reading out with you. And I'm going to model some good risk taking right here. Um, <laughs> recently, there was the Super Bowl. Uh, I don't know if you watched it on TV. Uh, and the halftime show was Bruno Mars. Did anyone see that? It was amazing. He was fantastic. Amazing um, musician. And we're going to listen to a bit of his performance. And we're going to listen for the tone. 
Now, um, the reason why I picked Tone was I was in a session with Mary Aaronworth, who's another great developer, and she was saying they looked over some data from the testing of, in New York State, and they said the one thing that kids consistently got wrong on was identifying craft, especially Tone. And even the high flyers, they don't have enough practice with this. And she was saying that um, very often when we get to craft, for example, we often teach it as writing teachers, but we need to front load it in as reading teachers and not just wait till we're writing to, to talk about craft, but actually notice it when we're reading. So I'm gonna play this a little bit and think about what's the tone, what's the feeling you're getting from this, from this performance. talk with that person near you. What do you feel already from this performance? <laughs> uh, one of the ways we can find out about tone is looking at word choice. So I'm going to read it aloud in my best Bruno Mars voice. <laughs> Thanks. And if you could uh, just highlight words that uh, kind of evoke a strong emotion, words that stand out, maybe words that repeat one, two, one, two, three. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Never had much faith in love or miracles. Oh. Or is it ooh? Never want to put my heart on the line. Ooh. But swimming in your water is something spiritual. Ooh. I'm born again every time you spend the night. Ooh. Because your sex takes me to paradise. Yeah, your sex takes me to paradise. And it shows, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you make me feel like I've been locked out of heaven for too long, for too long. Yeah, you make me feel like I've been locked out of heaven for too long, for too long. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it would. Next, next chorus, uh, or next stanza rather. You bring me to my knees, you make me testify. You can make a sinner change his ways. Open up your gates, cause I can't wait to see the light. And right there is where I wanna stay. <laughs> can you uh, talk to the person next to you? What words stand out? Let's just capture some of these words. Uh, what do you have back at that table, Kate? Uh, faith, love, miracles. Was it fate? Faith, faith. Oh, faith. Faith, love, miracles. Luck. Love. Love, miracles. Faith, love, miracles. Spiritual. Spiritual. Testify. Born again. Swimming in your waters, born again. Yeah. This I told I told you it's going to be risk taking, right? I would not do this with students. I'm just saying that. Uh, anything else? Locked out of heaven. Locked out. Paradise. Paradise. Sex. Okay. So those are the words that stand out. Now the next thing we could do is try and see if there are any patterns. Like what do we see as patterns that emerge? And um, there, we should use something like colors. Uh, we could, if we had these on sticky notes, it might be cool to like rearrange, put them in groups. So could you talk with the person next to you? What, what patterns do you see? If you had to color code these words, is there one color? Are there two colors emerging? What do you see? Okay, 
one color you might see emerging might be something like faith, miracles, spiritual, uh, born again. Did anyone get these? Yeah. Testify, gates. heaven, gates, gates, right? Paradise. Not so much the last one. <laughs> no. Okay, so that may be one. Now you could see another one, maybe, you know, love. Um, <laughs> That one down there. Um, yeah, there's some metaphors going on over here that's a little, you know, risky. But, but I could see maybe a couple, and if we go back, you know, spending the night with you, that kind of thing. Those, so I think, I think Bruno Mars is using a couple of techniques here. So now the last step might be to come up with that. Um, what is he using? So. Bruno Mars uses, th these are almost like religious words. I mean, he's using religious words next to kind of physical words. I mean, religious words and physical images, maybe? I don't know. And here's the last thing. Why do we think he's doing this? To do what? Could you talk with your person next to you? He uses these things to do what? Why did he make that choice? It was his choice. Now, is this tone the same tone that we saw? When we cr read closer, I think we feel, oh my gosh. He was singing this in front of 115 million people. And there were, you know, 10-year-olds jumping up and down, <laughs> believing that this was really good. I don't know. I think that's the surprise emotion we could do with some of our kids, where they see things, not with this text, obviously, but they could see things that they wouldn't see the first time around. And it's everywhere. It's in our commercials. It's in our media. And we have to make them aware. What we just did was we went through the process. So here, let me just show you the process quickly. The first step is to experience the text. Okay, so we, we read it aloud once, we watched the video, right? Um, and then, and not do the close reading on the first go, but then to reread it with a lens, and only one lens uh, at a time. Don't try and do it all at once. We didn't look at structure, we didn't look at, um, you know, uh, point of view. We didn't look at text evidence. We just looked at one that I thought would really work with this piece. Uh, after we did that, we then looked for the patterns. We found the words and we kind of looked for the patterns. And which is the what of the author. And then we grew some new thinking, which is why do we think the author did that? What was the effect that that author made? Now, we would looked at one of the lenses of word choice. And in their book, they uh, lay out four lenses for us. And if you look at